Bibles to Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 through 30. And uh, I guess for about a couple years now, we've been kind of going off and on through the book of Matthew. We started in Matthew chapter 1, and now we're in the last section of the book of Matthew. And uh, uh, I always, uh, my bread and butter when I uh, teach or anything is to go through books of the Bible because that's the way it was written, that's the way uh, it was revealed to us, and you, you get so much out of it when you go through and just look at the, the passages. And so we've been through pretty much every passage from 1 to 26, and we've been through every passage from 1 to 26, and I would like us to all read verses 26 through 30 this morning. Would you follow along with me in your copy of God's Word? Now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Would you pray? Father, I thank you, Father, for the celebration of the Lord's Supper that we will be doing today. I thank you for all that you have given to us in that Lord's Supper because we are so forgetful. We need to be reminded week after week, day after day, of your great forgiveness in our lives. Lord, thank you for instituting the Lord's Supper. I pray you would help us understand it even better today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to tell you, the last part of the book of Matthew has so many good stories in it. It has stories about, the, uh, about Judas, about his betrayal. It has, it has stories about the Passover meal, about communion. It has a story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. It has a story of Peter. Peter being predicted he would deny Jesus three times, and Jesus denying him three times. It has the story of the religious council and Pontius Pilate. It has Judas committing suicide. It has Jesus before Pontius Pilate, and he, he actually asked who should he release that was condemned. And of course, the crowd chose Barabbas, and uh, they, Pilate asked, what should I do with Jesus? And they said, what? Crucify him, right? And so all of this stuff comes up. The cross is there. The great, the great voice of God when he says, God, my God, when Jesus said on the cross, why, has you, why have you forsaken me? That Jesus said that uh, uh, he cries out, and a moment later he dies. He's placed in a tomb. A giant stone is rolled against that tomb. But you know what? On that third day, Jesus rises again from the dead. Amen. Oh, it is a wonderful story, isn't it? Because salvation is brought to us. The disciples see Jesus face to face before he goes into heaven. And we all know the, the, one of the last words that he says to his disciples, he says, all authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Today we're going to look at the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, as we call it. This celebration is common to all Christians. I don't care what church you go to. I don't care what nation you're in. I, 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 don't care, I don't care how old or young we are. It doesn't matter. We all celebrate the Lord's Supper because they have been ordained. it was ordained by God to do. Now, some people celebrate it every week. Some people celebrate it once a month. Some people celebrate it once a year. There are all sorts of ways that we celebrate the Lord's Supper as far as timing is concerned. But Luke chapter 22, verse 19 reads, He took the bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So today we remember something. We remember the joyful, great sacrifice of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Our Lord is alive. Amen. And so today I want you to be able to celebrate the Lord's Supper even better. And there are three things I'm going to talk to you about this morning. The first of all, in order to celebrate it better, yet we need to understand the names of the Lord's Supper will help you 
celebrate it rightly. We call this the Lord's Supper. Now, I had one person tell me we can't, we can't eat it during the daytime because it's the supper. That's not what it means. That has nothing to do with what it means. But Jesus says in verse 26, it says, Now while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it or giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And so he gave it to his disciples. He said, Take and eat. This is my body. And so we, we see that in this passage, that it's the body. But it's also been called, that one of the names that's been called is the Eucharist. Eucharist, meaning the word we have in the Greek for thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And so while they were eating, Jesus took and blessed or gave thanks. And calling the meal that we eat here today a reminder of what we should be thankful for. It's a time when you can say, Thank you, God, for all that you have done for me. There's so many things you can be thankful for. Probably if you listed all the things we can be thankful for, in a, in a month we'll be celebrating Thanksgiving and celebrating what we can be thankful for. We have family, we have friends, we have, we have our livelihood, we have our health, we have things that we can be thankful so much for. But you know the thing we should be all ultimately thankful for? Jesus died in your place. Forgiveness has been won. The debt has been what? Wiped out, paid. Oh, let me tell you, when you don't have to go around feeling guilty, oh, that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? It's a great thing. But it not only says that, he died, but he rose again from the dead. He proved that he was the Lord. And so we have so many things to give thankful for. When we can't give thanks, we have a problem. When we can't say, thank you, Lord, we don't really understand what he did in coming to this world and living the perfect life without sin and dying in our stead. So that when we come to God, we don't have to work or do anything for that. He died on the cross for our sins, even though we didn't deserve it. You see, thanking Taking the Lord's Supper with an attitude of thanksgiving reminds us that salvation is a gift, not a paycheck. Let me say that again. Salvation is a gift, not a paycheck. So that's one word. Another word we use is the word communion. It's also called Holy Communion. One of the ancient church fathers, uh, Damascene, wrote... We call this community, communion for two reasons. One, we partake of the Lord's Supper because we are entering into communion with Christ. We are looking to Christ, to who He is, what He means. We do not teach that these elements are some sort of mystical thing going on. We are doing this because of what we cause us to remember. We are in communion with Christ purely because of God's great grace. I have a personal relationship with God. You have a personal relationship with God, not because of you. Like we sung today in the song, I will only boast in Christ. The only boast any of us can have is Jesus Christ. The only boast we can have is who he is. And so we have communion with Christ through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have communion with God through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his sacrificial death on the cross. The barrier between God and man has been broken, and you can enter in by faith. This is what the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, 13. It says, the Bible says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off, meaning that you really didn't know God, have been brought near by the blood of of Christ. You have been brought near to Christ. You have become intimate with Christ. You have become one in union with Christ. But you know what? Communion also symbolizes the communion we have with one another. Let me say, we, we have communion with one another, with each other, because you know at the foot of the cross it is level ground, as they used to say. One person is not better than another person. If you have been here in this church saved for 50 years or you have just professed Christ yesterday you know what 
you are in just in need of grace today, everybody just the same. Whether you've been Christian for 50 years or five minutes, we are all just as guilty before God. We have committed sin, and sin is what people don't like to talk about today, but sin is our rebellion against God, our lawlessness. We look on people today and we think, how can people do that? How can they break the law that way? I would never do that. But you know what? We all have sin. You have sin. I have sin. We have done things God said no. And we've also done things God have not done things God told us to do. We have just disobeyed. We have gone our own way and become our own boss. That's number one. The words. Number two, the symbolism of the Lord's Supper. The symbolism of the Lord's Supper is found in verses 26 through 28. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup also. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Now there are two elements here. The bread, right? And the wine. The bread and the juice. They are symbols of what we should remember about Jesus. During this time, Jesus was taking the Passover meal. The Passover, if you remember, was their exodus out of Egypt. That that the the angel, the avenging angel, passed over those who had put the, the blood on the doorpost. And they were remembering their, their exodus from Egypt during that time. At one point in the Passover meal, a leader usually would break a loaf of bread and say, this is the bread of the affliction which our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. But Jesus gave a new symbolism to the bread. He said, this is my what? Body. This is my body. He wasn't speaking literally like some people may take it, he was speaking in a symbol word. He was saying, if we're going to remember this as a memorial, not as just an energy pill that we have to go through as a ritual, we want to remember what Jesus actually did. In his body, it was broken. His body was taken. His body was put to death. Why? Because of what we did against God. So that we can be forgiven by God. In order for us to be saved, it was necessary for Jesus Christ, the Lord, to die. He died for our sins. And through his death, he paid the price we could not pay. There's nothing you can offer God today or say, God, I can pay you something back for what you've done. I I meet people all the time. I met someone recently. They would always say, well, you know, I've tried it. I've tried. I'll try better. I'll try better. You know what? The more you try to be right with God, you will never succeed. What you have to do is hold up your hands and say, I give up. I give up and the only basis I can come to God is because of what Jesus did in dying in my place. We are all equal under the cross. The wine symbolizes the blood that's required for reconciliation. In the Old Testament, they would always talk about the reconciliation of the blood. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, we read, Indeed, under the law, almost everything was purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Modern people look at Christianity and they say, Well, you just, you just celebrate a slaughterhouse. You think blood is so important. Well, the blood of Jesus is important. In the Old Testament, they would slaughter animals and they would kill animals and put that on the, on the ark and they would, they would have a time of atonement. Well, in the New Covenant, Jesus said, you know what? It is not about an animal. It's not about a thing. It's about me. I will willingly give my life for you. Amen. You see, the Bible says these things very clearly about the blood. In Romans 5, 9, it says we have been justified by the blood By his blood, excuse me, we have now been justified by his blood. In in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, it says we have redemption through his what? Blood. And in Colossians chapter 1, we read we have peace with God through his blood. 
And in 1 John 1, 7, the blood of Jesus Christ does what? Cleanses us of all sin. In the hymn we sing, there is power in the blood. Amen. Serves to remind us that salvation is not free. It costs Jesus his life. And it's not something we should do casually. <clears throat> Let me tell you a great thing, having, to, having our sins washed away. It's not just that we get to go to heaven. It's that we're free from the power of sin now. You are free from the power of sin. Do you struggle with lustful thoughts today? You can be set free because of the price that Jesus paid upon the cross with his blood. There is power in the blood. Do you struggle controlling your temper? You can be set free because Jesus paid the price for it. Do you struggle with lying or gossip or bitterness or envy or anger or jealousy? You can be set free of all those things because there is power in the blood. Today, when you take the cup, I want you to take a moment to say to God, thank you for shedding your blood for me. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. The blood will, that will never lose its power. The blood that removes the penalty, the power, and eventually the presence of sin in my life. Thank you, God, for setting me free. You can be set free by the power of the blood. And the last thing I want to say is about the purpose of the Lord's Supper. We're going to take the Lord's Supper in just a few minutes. And I want to ask you this question. What is the purpose that you take the Lord's Supper for? It's to remember that's right. But it's to, there's two reasons that you remember things. You look backwards at what God accomplished on the cross. I believe that Jesus accomplished. Jesus didn't just die to make people savable. He died to save people. And so when he died, he accomplished my redemption on that cross. He, he did everything he needed to do upon that cross. There's nothing else that Jesus needed to add to that. We look back with thanksgiving. We look back to the communion we have with God, the forgiveness we have. We look back at what he did. Matthew chapter 26, chapter 26, verse 29 says, I tell you, I will not drink it again of the fruit of this vine until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. Because that's the second purpose. You look back and you look forward. One day Jesus will come back again. I said today, Jesus is not dead. He's not in a grave. He's in heaven. And one day he will come back and set his feet on planet earth. And he will say to all of us, now is the time that you will be gathered up into my presence forever. His kingdom will be fully established. His kingdom is established today, but fully established it will be in the future. So today as you take the bread and the cup, look forward. Look backwards. And a final note, don't take it in an unworthy manner. You see, we're all unworthy. None of us is worthy to take the bread and the cup apart from his grace. But when we, the Bible refers in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that we should not take it in an unworthy manner, it means going through the motions, not thanking God, not making ourselves right with God and each other. Ask God today to cleanse your heart. If you feel guilty about something you've done, ask Him for forgiveness. Remember why it's called the Eucharist. We should be thanking God today. Remember why it's called Holy Communion. Because it symbolizes the communion we have with our Father. Remember why the, we use the bread and the, and, the, and the juice? Because they symbolize the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was spilled for you. And remember, not only to look back, but to look ahead. So as we take the Lord's Supper, remember, this memorializes it forever. Don't forget and never think it gets old remembering what Jesus has done for me, you and me. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning. I pray that as we come to the Lord's table this morning, I pray that you would bless us and strengthen us. I pray that as we come to the Lord's table, that you would, if, if, if we need to be right with each other or right with you,